PrisPay was, uh, was created, uh, founded in 2006 by me and two other guys when we graduated from university. And uh, in the beginning we did a lot of different stuff, all digital, but we didn't really know in which direction, but we, we liked games and uh, over the first year we did more and more games and then we decided that this was going to be only games and not websites and banner ads and advertisement and stuff like that we also did at the time. Uh, Max is a boy, like many others, and uh, one day he wakes up and finds a, a marker in the, in the mailbox and um, it turns out it's a magic marker, but he, he doesn't know that, so the first thing he draws, like any other, good boy, he draws a monster and the monster becomes alive and his only way to, um, to, get, to, to get rid of the monster is to chase him through his own drawings. So the concept is that you control Max through a number of levels, typical kids drawings and, uh, and, and with the other hand you, uh, you, you, you control the marker so if you need say a bridge you draw a bridge, if you need a seesaw or catapult you can draw a catapult and throw something heavy on it you'll shoot your own way. Physics based drawing and the tagline is run, jump, think, draw. I think it, it depends very much on the concept. I see really good games like racing games are uh, fantastic and, um, and say uh, FIFA, the football games are also fantastic and they, they don't require that much creativity. They're still fantastic games. So I think it depends on the concept. But in our area, I think be giving the player opportunity to be creative is definitely the big plus. It's a, uh, yeah. And there's a big trend in gaming at the moment to allow people that level, level uh, editors and stuff like that is almost, uh, is almost essential in, in games. Well, we have been lucky enough to, uh, to team up Unity 3D, our engine, and, uh, and they, they've been really helpful in a way. The engine wasn't quite ready to port for the, for, for the Wii yet, but uh, when we find bugs we can call them so, uh, and, and, they'll, and they'll fix it. So, so far it's been really nice and um, yeah. Uh, a bit of both, you can say. We all, we all like to do games and uh, what we did was always somehow game related, but we, we didn't actually know which way we wanted to go because we had a quite good business just doing advertisement and stuff like that. So it was a bit of a decision, do we want to follow our dream or do we want to make money? And we ended up following the dream and hopefully we'll end up making money one day too. I think, uh, I think it would be possible, but, but I think the digital download offers something else. I mean, we had offers from publishers wanting to publish uh, Max and the Magic Marker as a, as a retail game, but we ended up calculating the numbers and we really liked the thought of being digital and having a small budget, small team, uh, and then a, a smaller game eventually. But the thought of being able to do 10 small games is greater for us than to do one big game. So we decided and we really liked going for the WiiWare. On every level, there are a number of secrets hidden, and it's not a specific way, and it doesn't look the same. But if you stand in the right place, or you, or you can, you can, you can. I'll, I'll give you one. That's a that's a that's a, a soda machine in one level. If you drop, uh, draw a, a big ball, you drop it on top of it, it will kind of explode and give you a secret. And and then there are a number of small tweaks here and there. Doesn't mean anything to the gameplay. Just really interesting while you're playing and. When we tested, people really loved those parts. Well, to begin with, uh, all of the games that we've ever made has always been mechanic-based, meaning that we don't start with a big story or a big concept. It's always a core mechanic and a very small prototype that proves that this mechanic is actually fun. For us, in, the, in this case, it was the combination of, uh, of having a, a physics platformer, somewhat like Little Big Planet, not as extensive as Little Big Planet. And then uh, there was another big trend in gaming at the time, being uh, Lion Rider and Crayon Physics. And, uh, and, and the whole drawing thing. But, but what we wanted was to have a mechanic that would uh, allow for, uh, for the player to draw more freely than just have the shape recognition like the old uh, crayon physics. And so, um, so that was essentially the beginning. Of and gameplay-wise, that means that, in the, that the, we have a number of puzzles, uh, lots of puzzles, and there are unlimited ways of solving them. When we design them, we see, ah, then you can do this, you can do this, you can do this, draw a staircase, and then uh, you shoot yourself up here. And, but, but, uh, but, when, but when we test it, we find that, that, that the people who play it, they solve it a thousand other ways than we, than we thought. And that's what I think is the beauty of the game. Also, I really like the, the part of the game uh, where, where you step in and out of, the, of this little boy Max, the character's uh, imagination. When you press uh, space, when it's a PC, or when you press uh, the pause mode, you freeze the mode and it kind of steps out of his imagination, looking at the drawing as a child's drawing. All the graphics become child's drawings, and you have time to do the exact right drawing, and then you can activate time again and you're back into the imagination of the game. 
it was uh, it was a long process. I, I can show you some of the, the the artwork if you want, but it's uh, it's it's been uh, iteration over iteration over iteration, and we ended up going this way because we wanted to appeal very widely. Our target group is uh, from eight and up, and when we test, we test on thirty years old, and twenty years old, and fifteen years old, and eight year olds. Year old. So it's uh, it had to be very um, very uh, embracing to all ages, and that's why we ended where we are.